Hello, great stuff. Welcome to Euclidean Geometry session. And this is session four. It's our last session. And we're going to be focusing on Pythagoras theorem with similarity. So I know that most of you now might be saying, ah, uh, I did Pythagoras in grade nine. It's very simple and all that. So I just want you to put that mindset behind you and let's focus on Pythagoras theorem with similarity so that you can get this new knowledge that they want you to learn here in grade 12. Okay. Okay, like I said, this is our last session and let's take a look at the content outline. You can see it on unit six, Pythagoras theorem and similarity, right? So uh, that, that's it. So we are still using mind the gap uh, mathematics study guide for extracting some of the uh, proofs there and and also some of the notes and uh, examples and all that okay okay uh, this is theorem of pythagoras and i know that you learned in it in grade uh, nine you were taught or introduced to theorem of pythagoras in grade nine if i'm not mistaken grade eight and here in grade 12, really, the focus is to try to, 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 to connect this theorem with similarity, right? So it's, it's, it's basically in, in that sense. And you, you'll, you'll realize this as, as, as soon as we start to do example, you'll see that this theorem is very, very important if you want to solve questions related to similarity and to grade 12 Euclidean geometry. Uh, so the theorem of Pythagoras, it's, it's proved using similar triangles. Like I said, they want to connect Pythagoras theorem with similarity and, and it's really like that, right? So you get a sense of how did, did Pythagoras discover this theorem? But what's, we're, we're not really more focused on, on that we, 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 are, we are focused on making you to understand and, and to learn how you can uh, prove this theorem. And also, this is definitely for examination purposes if they can bring this theorem to your exam. Okay, so the theorem statement says, if any right angle triangle, so this is the statement, if any right angle triangle uh, in, in any right angle triangle, in any right angle triangle, the square of the hypotenuse, as we always know, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So this is the theorem of Pythagoras. We have been singing it from grade nine. Square of the hypotenuse plus the sum of the square of the other two sides. We know that, right? So this is theorem of of Pythagoras. So let us go and prove that really it is true that the square of the of, of the hypotenuse is equal to the, 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 the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So before proving the theorem, we definitely have to start by construction, right? So we have to start by construction. And what I will do now in, in this one, uh, let me just delete some of the things here so that you might uh, you may not get confused or maybe not understand what are we doing or why are we doing what we're doing okay so i'll just give you a right angle triangle ignore the rest of the things that were there you are just given a right angle triangle here is it right a b c right you are given a right angle triangle and also let me delete this one here you're just given a right angle triangle and it has 90 degrees. And now they want you to prove, required to prove that obviously BC squared will be equals to AB squared plus AC squared, right? So what you do, if you want to prove this theorem, you definitely start by construction, right? You start by construction. So you are given an angle of 90 degrees. You are given a right angle there and and it's a right angle triangle. So they just say, prove that BC squared, as I've said, is equal to AB squared plus AC squared. Okay, we start by construction. And what do we do? We draw a perpendicular line from 
a perpendicular vertex um, uh, to the hypotenuse. Uh, so what you actually do, you are going to draw a line from a perpendicular vertex that will be perpendicular to the hypotenuse. You draw it to the hypotenuse. Obviously, we also know that this side is also 90 degrees. So that is our construction and we'll just name that point D. Can you see? So that is why they are saying we are drawing AD, which is parallel to, to BD. So what you do, you go from the perpendicular vertex, you draw a perpendicular line towards the or that that will obviously approach and reach the hypotenuse so that is your construction so you just write it as as your construction there so what do you do now and so now after making your construction you 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 get that you have created almost uh i can say three triangles uh you have the bigger triangle which was initially the abc but by forming this perpendicular line, you have also created some of the two triangles, those two smaller triangles. You have ABD, can you see it? And you also have ACD, can you see it? That, that, that white one, the a, ACD. So you have now two triangles, right? So before going any further, what you can do, you can let one of the angles to be equals to X. It's either you can want to let this one to be X, uh, let me just show you uh, yeah let me just leave it like that you can let this one to be x or you can want to let that one to be x any of them so myself i'm just gonna let b to be x then obviously there it will be 90 minus x right so this side also it's 90 degrees angle a was given as 90 degrees so that you can remain 90 degrees here I must have x so that minus x and x cancel out each other right so obviously here it will be 90 minus x so that is what you do again so after construction you make or you let one of the angles to be equals to x then you solve for the rest of the angles there so that you can be able to understand uh, this next uh, stage okay so what will definitely happen now is that you are going to prove that those smaller triangles are similar to the bigger triangle and that bigger triangle we actually call it the mother triangle right the mother triangle because it was there in in in, in the origin before forming those other two smaller triangles by construction so the bigger triangle which is abc is the mother triangle so what you do in the next step if you want to prove and and this is where we prove right so what we do we prove similarity between the those smaller triangles and the mother triangle and the bigger triangles it means that i'm going to prove that in triangle ab a, B, A, B, D, which is this smaller triangle, is similar to the bigger triangle, which is A, B, C, right? Also, I'm going to prove also that triangle A, D, C will be similar to what? To the bigger triangle, which is A, B, C. And, and definitely you get them to be similar, right? So let us start with this side, with this triangle and also the, the mother triangle. So... When I'm proving this, obviously I'll say in triangle ABD as, as they've indicated there, and triangle A uh, CBA is that bigger triangle, right? CBA. So the first thing that we can see is that angle B is what is common. So angle B is common in both this smaller triangle and also the bigger triangle, right? Again, what can we see? We can see that this angle here which is adb adb it's this angle here right can you see it this one that i'm highlighting here this 90 degrees adb is this one there or maybe let me delete this adb is this one is the same as what in the bigger triangle is the same as uh c a b can you see c angle a b it is given right so it is given that they are the same and also for by construction we made this line to be perpendicular here so that it can be the same as that so this 90 is equal to that one okay so once you get two two angles that are equal you can just conclude 
that the two triangles are similar. You don't need to really look for the third angle as they've done here. So this is the first one, number two, and number three, right? So you can see from, from their proof, really, they've actually, uh, on number three, you don't necessarily have to write it, but you can just write it just for control, and you just look at the remaining angles. Obviously, uh, it was this one, then it will be equals to, to this one in the bigger triangle. So you can just call it the third angle of a triangle. So it's a third angle. You don't necessarily have to write it. If you can just get two things that are equal, uh, two angles that are equal between the triangles, you can just conclude. Therefore, the triangles are as similar by angle, angle, angle. Okay. So from similarity, we can now then move to what? To proportionality. Can you see? They have now moved to proportionality because they found the two triangles are similar, right? So they move to proportionality. And what's surprising from this proportionality, what might be surprising you is that their proportionality have only two ratios. They just take two proportionality, right? So that one where, where, where when you multiply, when you cross multiply to definitely give you something with a squared. So you'll definitely choose that one. Also when you are doing proportionality and it will give you that one with a square. Okay, so after we cross multiply there, we get AB squared is equals to BC times BD, right? So this is our equation, is our equation one. So don't forget, I said from similarity, you can move to what? To proportionality but you when you make that proportionality you'll get you'll be having three ratios right i mean you'll be having three fractions there but you're gonna select the fraction in which when you cross multiply you get something with a square because our theorem that have, we have to prove there is something with a square can you see uh, so that is why here they just selected this uh two of them here so that when they cross multiply they can get a square so that is your equation what Equation one, can you see? Now we are done with that one, right? We go to the other smaller triangle, which is what? Which is ADC, it's this one, ADC, this side, right? Can you see that one? So you have to also prove the similarity between this smaller triangle and the, and the mother triangle and the bigger triangle, right? So similarly, we can just, Obviously, we're going to prove, and I, I, I won't show you how you're going to prove it. Obviously, you just get check the angles. If they're equal between the two, then you have proven, right? So then we can just deduce that. Similarly, we can prove that triangle ADC, uh, ACD to be similar to CBA, the mother triangles. Then from this one, we can just deduce what we can go to, to proportionality, right? So they went to proportionality and after cross multiply, they select that proportionality that have those things when they are cross multiplying, they, they will get a square. So, right? So after cross multiplying, obviously, we're going to go there and get this one, right? AC squared is equals to DC times CB, right? So now we have our square and this is our equation two, uh, equation two. We are going to add equation one and equation two. So it's it's because we are we are just lacking space here in in, in this um, in the screen that you are seeing. Otherwise, I would I would be showing you all the steps and procedures. So just also as as you are making notes, as you are listening, just also be be very attentive of of what I'm saying so that you you may not get lost. So we are going to say equation one plus equation what equation two, right? So it's equation one plus equation two. So it's going to be a b squared. Can you see a b squared plus what? In our equation two, we have a c squared, right? It will be equal to those things. It is b c times b d plus what? d c times c b, right? It, but you can see that from this thing that it, it is equal to, we can take a common factor of what? Of b c. We have a common factor b c, b c there. So we take BC as our common factor, we'll be left with BD plus DC. Look at BD, and let me highlight it with green. BD, here is it, plus DC. Can you see DC? It's there, right? BD plus DC, is that big length there? That is what? That is BC, can you see? It means that we can replace BD plus DC by BC, can you see? Then BC times BC is going to give us what? 
bc squared is equals to ab squared plus ac squared look now we have proven our theorem of pythagoras so let me just give you also an overview of how to prove this theorem again so that you may deeply conceptualize this right so how to prove this theorem what you do you first construct you'll just be given a triangle like this right you'll just be given a triangle like this they'll just give you a 90 degree and they say prove the theorem that states that uh, let me write this uh, bc squared will be equals to ac squared plus a b squared so in order to prove this theorem of pythagoras you have to first start by constructing a constructing a perpendicular line from a, 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 a perpendicular vertex to the hypotenuse right after constructing you let one of the angles to be x you solve for all the angles in that triangle after doing so it will be easy for you to prove similarity right what you do you prove similarity between the smaller triangle and the bigger triangle right then after proving similarity you know from similarity you can go to to proportionality so on your proportionality when you are doing it you choose the two fractions that when you are cross multiplying it will give you something with a square because obviously theorem of pythagoras says, talks about square so you are going to choose that proportionality that have something with a square you cross multiply you say equation one number two step number two now you also go to that other smaller triangle you prove similarity between that smaller triangle and the and the bigger triangle again after proving similarity you can now go to to proportionality remember from similarity we go to to proportionality after proportionality check the two fractions check the two ratios that when you cross multiply it will give you something with a square then you say equation two then add equation one and equation two. Go and take a common factor, replace that one, multiply and multiply. Then you get your theorem of Pythagoras proved like that. Look at this. We have now proven that AB squared plus AC squared is equals to BC squared. And this is how you we, we prove this theorem. Okay. Okay. Uh, now that you you learned uh, how to prove the pythagoras theorem you also need to be able to know how you can apply this theorem and how you can use it to solve uh, different questions that relates um a pythagoras theorem with similarity okay so take a look at the diagram that uh that i've just shown you here and it's triangle a b c can you see that there's a perpendicular line that is coming from a right angle vertex right can you see there's a perpendicular line here that we drew on our construction don't forget that was perpendicular to the to the hypotenuse can you see and we have a perpendicular line that is coming from a right angle vertex right angle vertex uh, 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 to hypotenuse can you see so when using this theorem this is the reason that you must use right to say there is a perpendicular line from um, a right angle vertex to hypotenuse so you just simply write perpendicular from right angle vertex to hypotenuse and where do we give this reason okay i just want to you to know this so these are the co corollaries right so and what do we mean by corollaries it means like different aspects of uh deductions that can be made from this theorem right for example every time if you see a right angle triangle I, I want this to come to your mind every time when you see a right angle triangle and there's a line drawn from the perpendicular vertex there and it's going to the hypotenuse and it also becomes perpendicular line and i mean it also becomes perpendicular to the hypotenuse so then you must think of these corollaries or these deductions that can be made from this uh this 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 kind of diagram or from this theorem right so you must know for sure 
that in this kind of triangle where you have a perpendicular line drawn from the perpendicular vertex to the hypotenuse you must know for sure that all those triangles are similar to each other so you must know for sure and i've just shown you on the proof that we can really prove that they are similar to each other right so you must know that the smaller triangle is similar to the bigger triangle and another smaller triangle is also similar to the to the bigger triangle and also these smaller triangles themselves they are also similar to one another and we call that corollaries or these deductions that can be made from this theorem when there's a perpendicular line from a vertex to a hypotenuse okay so that's it okay now you can see that we can say triangle abc which is the bigger triangle is similar to the smaller triangle uh, dba can you see dba immediately you see this you can go straight to proportionality then look for those uh, ratios that will give you a square then write them down ab squared is equals to bc times bd right so now i just want you to 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 have this kind of uh thinking towards this uh kind of diagram because it's really important that you know uh how you can calculate certain sides from this diagram so even that when you see this diagram like this where there is a perpendicular line drawn from a perpendicular vertex going towards the hypotenuse and it also becoming perpendicular there know that those two all those triangles are similar to one another you don't need to actually first calculate and show them that they are similar no just know that they are similar to one another and we've just proven it on on the theorem there right by letting one of the angles to be x and all that so after doing that what you can basically do is you can just move from similarity you go to proportionality and you can make this conclusion to say a b squared this side this side on this smaller triangle and also on the bigger triangle right to be a b squared will be equals to what will be equals to uh, b c that is the length of the bigger triangle multiplied by the length of that smaller triangle that the the bigger triangle is similar to so it's basically what you do if you want to calculate the length of 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 of, of the triangle and you find that that length it's found on the bigger triangle and on the smaller triangle you can just basically get this sense of but it will be sort of like memorizing but it's it's not really bad in this case because you just really need to know uh, how you can actually get this uh this kind of thinking uh in a way that when you see this diagram you'll be able to think like that right so obviously now you know that when you see this kind of diagram what you have to think is that all the triangles are similar to one another they are also similar to the bigger triangle right so okay let me not give you that that sense of sort of like you'll be memorizing but know this all the triangles are similar to one another and we've just proven it before right and i keep on repeating this because it's very very important right so uh once you know that all the triangles are similar to one another for example they might want to calculate a certain length they might give you this diagram calculate this length what would prove that this triangle is similar like something like that I'll, I'll just show you on the example so you can just simply state okay the two triangles are similar you go to proportionality from similarity go to proportionality cross multiply then get those things such as also in the second corollary there or second deduction and also in the third deduction where they made the similarity between the the two smaller triangles themselves they are also similar to one another so another way another one can say okay if i see this kind of diagram i'll say the smaller triangles are similar to one another and they are also similar to the to the mother triangle that's simply there so when you give that uh this one is uh uh is 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 similar to that one the reason that you will provide you will just say because there is a perpendicular line from right angle vertex to hypotenuse so you just write this this reason when you make this 
sort of like deduction or corollaries okay and i hope you understand okay let's just quickly go and look at at an example just to enhance your understanding on this okay here's an example you are given that in triangle abc you have ab is goes to two millimeter and you have dc is goes to three millimeter and they are represented there they said determine the length of ad and bc leave your answer to the simplest side form when necessary okay how can we use those corollaries uh, in order to get this length. So look at the length that you need. You need the length what AD. I'll start by AD, right? You need AD. So using those corollaries, one can just start with the with quite a long method, but it's very safe. The one to say you can just simply conclude that this triangle is similar to the to the bigger triangle, so that you can be able to go to proportionality and then cross multiply and so for the unknown right it's 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 a it's a safe method and i think let's just use that one not um, the other one so using this one what i do because i need ad i'll go and prove uh, we know that i can just simply conclude that triangle the bigger triangle is a b c is similar to that smaller triangle that is my AD. But when I'm writing this similarity, you must be very careful that you are writing it in the order of the angles that are equal, right? So it means that you have to check whether your angle A was equal to what in that smaller triangle. So angle A was common in both the smaller triangle and the bigger triangle. It means you're gonna start with angle A because angle A is equal to angle A, uh, it's common. Then let's check B b in the bigger triangle it's 90 degrees then b should be ordered with what it should be followed with the one that is equal to 90 also which is d then obviously uh, our b will just be because it's, it's the remaining one okay so you must be very very careful about that right so you you know the reason is what is because we have a perpendicular line from um, from a right angle vertex and it's going to to be perpendicular with the to the hypotenuse right so our reason is perpendicular line from um, uh, we have perpendicular line you can just simply write it perpendicular line from right angle vertex to hypotenuse so that is why we are just concluding that the two triangles are similar because of that theorem of Pythagoras that we use, we proved there. Okay, so from this one, we can now move to what? To proportionality. We, we can then move to proportionality to say AB, AB over what? Over AD will be equals to what? Will be equals to BC. Uh, let me write it proper. BC over what? Over DB which will be equal to what? To be equal to AC over what? Over, oh, sorry about this line. Over what? Over AB, right? So that is our, our, our proportionality because we are moving to proportionality because we have proven that ABC is similar to triangle what? ADB. So you don't need to prove whether they're similar. Just know always if you are given this kind of triangle where there is a line uh, that is a perpendicular line that is coming from a perpendicular vertex to hypotenuse, then just know that uh, you can prove that you, you can deduct that uh, the, the, the triangles are similar. Okay, so now I need to solve for AD, right? So remember also the choice of triangles matter. You don't just choose to, to prove similarity between triangles that don't have the length that you want right so ad is there we are safe do we have ab ab is there right and ab is here can you see so what's left here uh, obviously ac it's 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 a combination of three and ad so you, you now see now the, the the things that we're gonna choose now because they have the information we want and we can just use them and equate them and so for our for our uh, 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 our unknown so I'm just gonna say a B 
over AD is equals to what AC over AB. So I won't really need this one because it won't help us, right? So when you cross multiply the to be AB squared is equals to what is equals to AD times AC, right? By cross multiplying, you find that AB squared is equals to AD times what times uh, AC, right? Times AC. Okay. So, but you know that AB squared, your AB was 2. So I can replace by 2 to say 2 squared is equals to, what is your AD? We want it. What is our AC? Our AC, it's, uh, let me show you by green, although I showed you before. Our AC is this length. Can you see? It's the whole one. So it is what? It is 3 uh, to be multiplied by our AC is 3 plus what? Plus AD. Then we really need to multiply by AD here to, to, in order to solve for AD. So AD will multiply with 3 and it will be 3 AD. And AD will multiply with what? It will multiply with AD and it will be AD squared. Can you see? So it's equals to what? Is equals to 4. Can you see right there? So let's go and simplify that one. So it's going to be 4 is equals to, um, or I can take it to the other side to say AD squared ad squared uh, plus 3ad minus if i take 4 to the other side minus 4 is equals to 0 right so if i let my ad to be x it will be x squared plus 3x minus 4 is equals to 0 so my ad is x i can go and solve for x and and get my ad right so i can quickly just factorize the x x 4 1 plus and minus so x will be minus 4 or x will be equals to 1. So minus will cancel out it uh, because we don't have uh, the length that is minus. x is was d, then my ad is equals to 1 millimeter. Can you see? It's, it's, we got it, but this method, like I said, is quite long because uh, you, you just need to follow this and all this. But let me just show you another method that you can use instead of this one although this one is the standard one that can help you to attack a lot of questions like that but also there's another method that you can use and let me just quickly show you okay okay this other method now uh, it's it's from the coro corollaries right I, I really want you to look closely at the corollaries and so that you can get a sense or, or a sequence in which you can try to understand those multiplication and all that without first going from similarity and all that and you cross multiply to get those things but i just want you to look at the diagram and be able to 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 get those uh those final answers of the cross multiplication of the ratios and all that right and how do we do so obviously you must have a right angle triangle with a line that is drawn that is um, from a perpendicular vertex going to to be perpendicular to the hypotenuse you must have those things right in order to deduct what i want to show you okay now that we want ad right so what you will do really is because i want ad right because i want ad what i will do is I'm going to, 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 to find, to, to, to use a length that I have in the smaller triangle, right? I'm going to check which length form part of, 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 of that unknown uh, that I want, that, that is given actually. Okay, I hope I made sense there. Let me just repeat. So I want AD, right? I want what? AD. So now what you do, is you go on the same triangle that has that AD, you look if you are given a length that is part of that smaller triangle and that is also part of that bigger triangle, then you can just go straight into deduct deducting those, uh, those after cross multiplying those expression, those equation, how will they be? So we can see the line I'm talking about is what is AB is the one that we are given, right? And this AB form part of this smaller triangle and also the bigger 
the mother triangle. Can you see? So then I can deduce that AB squared. Why am I saying squared? Because it forms part of the smaller triangle and also the bigger triangle. So it will be equals to, then it will be equals to the length of the bigger triangle multiplied by the length of the, the smaller triangle. That's what you do. So the length of the bigger triangle is what? Is AC. The one that we're going to choose is this one. AC multiplied by the length of the smaller triangle. It's this one, which is AD. And the reason that you give, just say perpendicular line from perpendicular vertex to hypotenuse, to hypotenuse. That's the reason that you give. You can see this deduction. Uh, if, if, you, if you return back to this video, you'll see that this deduction, we had already made it, but after going through similarity, what, 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 after cross multiplying, it takes a lot of time. So what you can basically do, if you see this diagram, you can just go straight to the deduction and you'll be able to make these deductions uh, the more you practice, the more you practice this thing, right? The more you practice it and, and the more you look at this theorem, you'll be able to make this. And let me repeat how you do it. Now, because I need the length of this smaller triangle, right? I mean, the length of, of, of this side in the smaller triangle. What I do, I first ask myself, is this smaller side part of also forming part of the bigger side in the in the bigger triangle i say okay it's forming a smaller portion right so then i'm i'm going on the same triangle where i have this unknown side to say i will identify a side that is forming part of what of 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 the smaller triangle having the same unknown side and also that is forming part of the side of a bigger triangle. You can see that AB is also the side of a bigger triangle. Then I can just simply say AB squared because AB is, for, is forming part of the smaller triangle and the bigger triangle. So I can say AB squared is equals to, then I'll say the length of the bigger triangle, which is AC multiplied by the length of the smaller triangle. Okay, so then I just go and substitute my two squared, then also my AC, uh, uh, AC, you can see AC, it, 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 it's, it's 3 plus AD, right, multiplied by AD, then I can simply go in and do the same thing that we did, and, and so for AD. Can you see? Also, there are other many deductions that can be made. BC, let's look at BC. They want BC, right? So with BC, you want to get the length of what? Of BC, right? So look at BC. BC is forming part of the length of this smaller triangle here. Can you see? And your BC is also forming part of the length of the bigger triangle. So BC is going to be much better because you just say BC squared because your BC is forming part of the smaller triangle and the bigger triangle. So you just BC squared is equal to. Then you will take the length of the bigger triangle multiplied by the length of that smaller triangle, right? So BC squared will be equal to what? CA, the length of the bigger triangle, multiplied by the length of that other smaller triangle, multiplied by CD, so that the deduction you can make, and there is a perpendicular line from, oh, I have to perpendicular line from, uh, from perpendicular vertex to hypotenuse. So it is because we had this perpendicular line coming from a perpendicular vertex to, to, to hypotenuse. So that's actually the deductions that you can make. You can make many, many deductions. You just need to know this kind of sequence. Sort of like hard to know it. But if it hard for you to sort of like get to know how to do this, just simply go and prove similarity between the smaller triangle and the bigger triangle. Or prove similarity between two triangles that you see they have the sides that will enable you to solve the unknown, then you'll be able to solve that unknown. So that's really, really very important for you to, to understand and conceptualize. Okay. Okay, great. So uh, this, this really marks the ends of our sessions. We did four sessions on this chapter, Euclidean geometry, and this was our last session. Thank you very much for being with us. 
thank you for 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 tuning in all the times liking our videos commenting thus encouraging us to make uh, and to create more of these content videos uh, thank you very much for that what i can encourage you from now uh, for now it's now that we are done uh, and and i'm done just showing you how to prove and also how to solve questions related to euclidean geometry and this is basically euclidean geometry for grade 12 right so it's for grade 12 although there are some of the things that you already did in previous grades uh, you really need to learn how to prove all these theorems right it's very important because it's examinable right also number two you also need to now start working on past exam papers you have to be start solving those past exam papers start solving them start solving many questions start solving start solving so that you can um, you can get to understand this theorem and you can really conceptualize them much better and and deeply right so uh that that's my encourage, encouragement for you obviously you'll definitely ace ace uh euclidean geometry don't forget euclidean geometry from from has a lot of marks it has around plus or minus 60 marks if if i'm not mistaken or plus or minus 50 so it's a lot of marks that you wouldn't like to lose in in your paper too so this was just grade 12 euclidean geometry you also need to know your grade 11 euclidean geometry as it is also going to be part of the exam right in term one term two term three and final you'll have to to, to you'll be given most questions on on your grade uh on your grade 11 euclidean so you also need to revise i don't know if i will be creating the series of of uh, the session for that one I'll, I'll just try my best if i get time to just also create the sessions for 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 for, for that revision otherwise thank you very much for staying with us thank you for watching and that's all for me and uh let's call it today goodbye